Hello, this video is about the Autory 2 automatic test and calibration system that keeps your instruments accurate, workers safe, and facility in compliance. In this video, we're going to go over the setup process for an Autory 2 controller based system. Any Autory 2 controller based system has at least three components the actual Autory 2 controller, one or more cradles, and the terminal adapter, which is an integral part of the system. So the setup process is very simple. It consists of four steps. One, you need to assemble the system. Two, turn it on. Three, check and make sure that gas inlets are configured properly. And four, connect the calibration gas cylinders to the system. So let's start with the first step, the assembly. Connect the first Autory 2 cradle to the controller. Then if you have more cradles, then each cradle connects to the other one. And then at the very end goes the terminal adapter. Then use the screws to hold the system together. Tighten the screws. Next, install the screw caps. There are four of them. In this system and then in systems with a larger number of cradles, you'll have more screws and more screw caps. The assembly process is now complete. I would like to mention a couple of things to keep in mind in regard to how the system is shipped to you. The system comes with a controller and the terminal adapter in one box and each cradle in its own individual box. So there are a couple of things that come with the cradle that are not used when the cradle is deployed with the controller. Those things include the two end caps. These end caps are only used if the cradle is deployed in standalone mode or without the controller. If the cradle is deployed with the controller, they're not used and the terminal adapter is used instead. And also, the cradle comes with its own AC adapter that is also used only when the cradle is deployed in a standalone mode. For a controller based system, we have a large, powerful AC adapter, 7.5 amps, that allows the system to charge up to 10 instruments at the same time. That is the AC adapter that should be used. Next, in order to prepare the system for calibration or bump testing, we're going to power it on. Once again, we're going to use the AC adapter, the large AC adapter that comes with the controller, not the AC adapter that comes with the cradle. Unlike a standalone cradle, a controller-based system has a power on-off switch. So in order to turn the system on, I need to actually turn on the switch, which is located at the bottom left corner of the controller. So the system powers on. You can hear the controller pump turn on. And then once the system completes its power cycle, it's going to be ready for use. The next step is to make sure that the gas inlets are properly configured to match the sensor configuration of the multi-ray instruments that you are going to use with the Autoray 2. The benefit of a controller-based system is that in addition to being able to combine up to 10 individual cradles into one system that's centrally managed, you can also use up to five distinct gas cylinders with the system to accommodate various configurations of the multi-ray instruments. So if you look at the left side of the controller, you will see five dedicated gas inlets an exhaust port, and we always have a dedicated fresh air inlet. So these five gas inlets are all configurable, and you need to make sure that they are configured in accordance with the sensor configuration on your multi-ray. For example, if you have a multi-ray that has a PID sensor, CO, H2S, O2, LEL, and SO2 sensors, 
that you have at least the three following gases configured on your inlets. You have to have isobutylene for PID, you have to have a four gas mix for the CO, H2S, O2, and LEL sensors, and you have to have sulfur dioxide for the SO2 sensor. It is critically important to make sure that after you've set up the inlets, you connect the right gas bottles to the right inlets. Please note that it is required that demand flow regulators be used in all cases whenever you're using the Autory 2, regardless of the Autory 2 configuration. We always require that whenever you use a gas to calibrate the PID sensor, you use Teflon tubing with that gas. So now the system is ready for use. All you need to do is make sure that your multi-ray has compatible firmware in it so that it can be recognized by the Autory 2 and that firmware is application firmware version 1.10 or higher and sensor firmware 1.03 or higher. And then your multi-ray needs to be either turned off or it needs to be turned on and put into the Autory 2 communications mode. The system is now ready for use. Thank you for watching.